Lindsey Graham continuing to do his very best to jam us all right into World War III, now openly advocating for the assassination of Putin, saying that if he just gets taken out by somebody over there in Russia, this whole thing will just be resolved. Here is what he said on Fox. How does this end? Somebody in Russia has to step up to the plate. Is there Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful Colonel Stoppenberg in the <coughs> Russian military? The only way this sh ends, my friend, is for somebody in Russia to take this guy out. You would be doing your country a great service and the world a great service. Yeah, just uh, go assassinate him. Just go assassinate a foreign leader. Lindsey Graham, very excited about it, saying that Brutus may be a hero. In the Caesar story, he was sort of an assassin, but here he might be a hero. Of course, Brutus, according to Wikipedia, somebody who was a just one of the assassins who took out Julius Caesar. And the story goes that Caesar was stabbed by a number of different people sort of close to him. And when he looked up, he saw that Brutus was one of the assailants. And apparently he said in Greek, Kai Su Technon, which means you too, child, even you are stabbing me. This is the scene from the painting called Death of Caesar by Vincenzo Camusini. This is an Italian neoclassical painting. You can see Julius Caesar here right in the middle being stabbed by all sorts of people, different assailants with knives. And Lindsey Graham is hoping to sort of make a scene that looks like this, repaint it in a way that swaps that out. Instead of Caesar, we have... Putin getting stabbed by, who knows, by a Brutus over there in Russia. Now, we heard this same argument from Sean Hannity. He said previously that, you know, these things like executive orders and different governing structures that prevent people from assassinating foreign leaders, we can kind of get rid of those when we're dealing with Putin. This is what he said. If you invade an innocent country and you kill women and children and men, you forfeit your right to lead a country and you forfeit your right to live. And I hope that people around Vladimir Putin, well, I hope they take action sooner than later. Now, currently, the U.S. operates under a decades-old executive order, first signed by so President Gerald Ford. It prohibits Old. the U.S. government employees from engaging in political assassination. But my right. final question tonight is, when it comes to Putin, is it time to now revisit the rule? Uh, my rule I like better. New rule, you invade a sovereign country, you kill innocent men, women, and children, you forfeit your right to run a country and you forfeit your right to live. It's that simple. Cut off the head of the snake, the snake dies. Yikes, so I guess dictator Sean Hannity wants to just do away with the rules, just go take out Putin. But this is very curious because there are rules that do exist and there, as he recalled, as he mentioned there, there's one in particular that he said was decades old. It sort of emanates from Gerald Ford. This was Executive Order 11905. He signed this back in 1976. You can see there are photographs of Gerald Ford here, sort of on his desk, signing you know, different areas, looking at the documents and signing them. This was an effort to reform the U.S. intelligence community and improve oversight and ban political assassinations, right? It's not sort of ideal to governance if people are just eliminating each other's senators. For example, you know, what if there was a Brutus that existed in Lindsey Graham's circle? That would be a problem, which is why you don't want open season on politicians. You can see much of this executive order would have changed or strengthened, would have been changed or strengthened by Jimmy Carter's executive order, which was this one, which very clearly places a loophole limitation. It says this is executive order 12036 signed by Jimmy Carter. He was somebody who expanded the U.S. ban on assassinations and closed loopholes, stating that, quote, no person employed like a senator or acting on behalf of the United States government shall engage in or conspire to engage in assassination, which is exactly, I think, what Lindsey Graham just was arguing for. He says this ban on assassination would be restated in another executive order 1233. So again and again and again, because it's not good policy to advocate for the overthrow or the assassination of other leaders. 
And so Sean Hannity, Lindsey Graham are articulating concepts that seem like they would be in violation of these executive orders. Why would they do that? Was it just a misstatement from Lindsey? No, he actually doubled down on it on Twitter. And he posted this. He says, is there a Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful colonel? Basically the same line that he was using on the other show says the only way this ends is for somebody to take this guy out. You would be doing your country and the world a great service. He says the only people that can fix this are the Russian people. Easy to say, hard to do. And unless you want to live in darkness, better go engage in assassinations. And so Lindsey Graham is now as a sort of a, an extension, a representative of the U.S. government, a senator elected by the people. He is now openly advocating for the assassination of a foreign leader. And I think that that is yet another strong desire to see this situation escalate. I want to hear from you. Let me know what you have to say about it down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe wherever you're watching this because I look forward to seeing you on the next one.